Good morning, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Saturday, August the 8th, mini Zoom class. How How is it August the 8th already? Summer is already going too fast, just like so many other things that we're experiencing right now. So today we're going to play with our oxides and then maybe a little bit later with our polishes if you have them. And we're going to do some Northern Lights cards. So the first one we're going to do, this is just kind of a, a rough sample while I was practicing and playing around with it. Um, it is really actually quite easy because the Northern Lights are really just very fluid and very um, non-structural. So you can do a lot of what you want to do and there are really are no mistakes. So I am starting with um, oxides, and I actually decided to go with a larger piece of cardstock. Um, it, so if you want to cut a piece of black cardstock that is five by seven, because then this way I figure we can always trim it down and get the size just the way we want it for our card. And then we're going to go and layer on silhouettes and that kind of thing. And it's a very simple way to make an impactful card. If you are getting your inks ready, we have, I used a whole bunch of different colors. If you do not have the same ones, if you've got, as long as you've got something close, then you are okay. So in the background, we're gonna use black soot and chipped sapphire, and those are gonna kind of make our base. I will tell you the black soot on black paper does not show up very well, but I'll show you why I still want you to have it at the end. Um, the other colors that I have ready are Cracked Pistachio, Dusty Concord, and I'm just making sure I don't get my foams mixed up. I have Speckled Egg, and I have Wilted Violet. So we've got two purples, a green, and another bluey color, and that will help us to make this really pretty soft uh, northern lights look. And then what I do is I usually just leave them lined up at the top here with the right blending foam on top so that you don't get mixed up. So we're going to start with um, our five by seven piece of black paper. I'm just going to lower my camera just a little bit. Sorry for the earthquake folks just so you can get a closer view of what I'm working on. And hopefully I don't bonk it with my hands. So the really, it, let me show you what I was inspired by. So I found this on Pinterest. This is from a lady whose website is called stampandcreate.net. I believe the post itself is, um, from a while back, but she's just got such nice, pretty colors here, and I was really impressed at how easy it is uh, to create this kind of Northern Lights look. Um, you can see at the bottom here where she's got the black soot kind of blended in at the bottom to create that horizon, and then the Northern Lights above. So we're gonna start with the chipped sapphire, and this one I am using a blending brush. If you don't have a brush, the foam is just fine. I'm kind of just building up my foundation uh, for the other colors to go on. So I'm just gonna scrub my, scrub my brush in there again. Sorry for the earthquake, I'm on a wobbly table. And just in a circular motion in the center of our card, I'm gonna build up this base. And it's gonna be hard to see because dark color on dark color is Sorry again for the earthquakes. Um, not always easy to see, but it will, it will really make a difference in the end. And you don't have to go off because we are potentially going to be trimming this down. So you can see I've just kind of got this area that has the, the dark blue as our foundation. At any time, ladies, if I am going too fast or you need me to repeat something, I am more than happy to do so. Um, so I'm now going to move on to my cracked pistachio. And I know in my email, if you uh, read the, 
read the fine print, I did suggest that you use the blending foam as opposed to the brush for this technique. Um, that's because we're going to try and just use the sides. We don't necessarily want a full swatch of that color going across our page, but if we use the edge, we're going to get that streaky look to our northern lights. So it's a lot easier to get an edge when there is an edge compared to the blending brush. Now, if you are one of those fortunate people that has the smaller brushes, by all means, use the brushes. Um, we just want small areas uh, this time around. Oh, sorry for the squeak. So again, I'm gonna ink up my blending foam, try not to shake the camera too much. Because I'm right-handed, I'm gonna be going from top left to bottom right. If you happen to be left-handed and go in the opposite direction, I don't think there is a right or a wrong way. As long as you do all your streaks kind of in the same direction and I'm actually going to just smoosh it rotate it a little bit just on the angle so we just want to start doing streaks and again I'm just using the side and just kind of drawing these streaks diagonally across your page. And we are probably going to be going back and forth between our colors. So don't necessarily put your lid on in between. And right now, it's not looking like a whole heck of a lot. But trust me, as we start building it, it'll start to come together. And if you feel like your color, like I feel like some of my color here is still a little faded, I'm just gonna go back in and go over some of those areas again. Try to keep that fluid kind of streaky look to it. All right, so there's our cracked pistachio. The next one I'm gonna go in with is the speckled egg, which is a very similar tonality to the cracked pistachio, but it, um, it's got more of those blue-gray tones, so it just does provide a different shade. And again, just using the side of your foam, so now I'm going in different areas from where I had that cracked pistachio. It can overlap. And now it's starting to take form here. The next one I'm going to switch into is my Wilted Violet. And again, just getting the sides. Now, when you, Wilted Violet is a much brighter color. Oh, it actually doesn't show up that much brighter. So you just want to be careful that you don't overdo it. It's always best to go in lightly and add some more color as you go along. So I'm going to build some streaks down here some streaks up here. And if you decide to do more of these on your own, I do, I do encourage you to um, experiment with some different color combinations. Even go on to Google. I often will do this. I'll go on to Google and just type in either Aurora Borealis or Northern Lights and get some photo references because that will help you um, figure out what colors you want to use. Maybe you don't have these colors in your stash or maybe you just want to try something a little bit different. All right, so there's my wilted violet and you can see as you build it up, it does turn into a bit of a brighter look. And then the last color I'm going to go in with is my uh, Dusty Concord, which is a deeper um, purple compared to the Wilted Violet. And just filling in some of the gaps. Now, I'm doing really quite straight lines as they did in kind of the sample, but I'm sure you've also seen images of the Northern Lights where they are more, they've got a curve in them. 
once you've figured out your technique, then you can go in and start playing with shape. But I'm doing it pretty straight just to show you the technique. And my, my glass mat is very slidey today, so I keep using it. Now I'm looking at this here and I'm thinking, okay, now I've got lots of purple going on. I think I'm going to go back and add just a little bit more cracked pistachio to let some of that green come through in areas that I may now have covered up. Because sometimes you want that purple to be the hero. Sometimes you want it to be a little bit more muted. And really, that's all there is to that basic technique. Now, like I said, the black is kind of your fix-it. So I now have this um, background, but I'm coming way down here. And you do want to have that little bit of a horizon to it. So this is where I'm now going to go back in with my black soot. Sorry for the earthquake. And just kind of make my hills. And that really will soften out all of that color that's at the bottom that maybe we don't want to see anymore. It just means that you can be a little bit more free when you're creating your northern lights. And then just go in and fix it at the end. The last thing that I did just to add a little wow factor when I was playing around, I've got some shimmer on there. So I grabbed my copper aqua shimmer pen from Nuvo. And I like this because it does have that really nice fine um, brush. Sorry, I'll get more on camera here. Um, so I can do some really fine streaks. I think I need a little bit more. Where's a scrap piece of paper? There we go. There we go. Just do, now I'm using copper. If you have the clear one or even the gold one, any of those are going to work. And just give that extra bit of color and definitely that shimmer. So look how that just changes it up a little bit. So now what I can do, just, I mean, literally, you can keep building colors and keep layering as much as you wish, or if you feel like you got it the way you like it, now it's time to make it in work. And it's super easy. So I am gonna trim this down. Um, I've got my standard card sizes, so that would be four by five and a quarter. This is five, so I'm just going to take a half inch off each side. And this is, I, so I may have trouble fitting this all in now, so I'm just going to cut it right here. This is at six, and I want it down to five and a quarter. Here. And here, here, here's something to learn. Wait till your Wink of Stella is dry or your Nuvo Shimmer Brush is dry. I've got it now all over my trimmer guide. But the nice thing about the, the guillotine is that I can lift this up. I think I can even take it out and give it a wash down. So no, no worries there. And now because I trimmed off that bottom, I'm going to add just a little bit more black. Just to build that up a little bit. And I'm going to grab my card. Didn't bring a tape runner up, so I'll just use my liquid glue.
center it on my card. Now it's kind of nice. I like how the white really sets off all of those dark colors. And then I have die cut. So I grabbed this die set here, which is one of our planner dies from Elizabeth Crafts, simply because I liked having that tree silhouette, but any trees that you have, or if you, I mean, she's got some nice little deer here as well. It's just trying to create that silhouette look in your foreground. So I have some trees I cut here. I cut them ahead of time. And I'm just going to attach it here on my purse. Maybe come down a little bit. And then I can always go into and cut some individual trees and pop them up. So let's do that. I'm going to grab my sticky specs today. Haven't pulled these out in a while. So sticky specs are little teeny, 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 tiny um, adhesive bits that you can use for die cuts. Gonna open it up. Sometimes you need two hands. I'm gonna stick it down here. Rub all the specks onto my trees. And you can see now I've got sticky stuff all over the back of my tree, so I didn't have to finagle with it, though it is sticking to my fingers. And place it here on my card. I'm gonna snip a few of this one. I had one that when I cut it, one of the ends didn't make it, so I'm gonna just snip some of these other trees off, grab my foam squares, and pop him on here so we're creating our little forest. There we go, and let's do this little guy here. Oh. It's amazing how you lose stuff that you just had. All right. Oh, that one. And now we've got a little forest building there. So there, really super simple. If you wish, you could put um, a sentiment up here. Probably what I would do if I were going to do a sentiment, I would emboss it in white. The other thing we could have done that I did on this one and forgot about is I spritzed it with some water and with the oxide ink, what it does is oxidizes to make kind of like that star look that the, the stars are showing through those northern lights. So that's version number one. Does anyone have any questions? I am going to assume that if there is silence, we are Good to move on. Now, let's. Mary, yes. If you were mass producing, would you recommend doing each individual card uh, to do wet on wet, or could you do one color at a time on very on a lot of cards and then go back? I think you could do you could do one color at a time and do a whole bunch. What you might also want to do is like if you cut a whole strip did your northern lights all across the whole strip and then cut it down into your individual card pieces that way you've got more of a flow going does that make okay. sense yeah all right so that is with the oxide inks and i think it gives a really pretty soft look to it and i love just that little bit of shimmer but we're going to take it up a notch so if you remember with opal polishes, they are this creamy, creamy, almost like a lotion, it's almost, almost looks like your face cream, just though I wouldn't recommend putting it on your face, um, medium. And when you put it on white paper, and I'll just 
do it on the back of my card here. So this one is lilac. So when you put it on white, and you really don't need a lot, I'm just gonna scoop it out and then scoop it off. When you put it on white, it just gives you that iridescent, I don't know if it's gonna show up very well, but you can see how when you move it in the light, you get just that really light shimmer of the purple. But when you put it on black or on a dark color, the color really sinks. So you see that that's the exact same polish that I just put on this white one, but it turns, it brings out the color when you put it on black. So we're gonna do the exact same technique, but we're gonna use the opal polishes. So if you, if you have polishes, fantastic. Um, go ahead and cut another piece of paper that's five by seven. If you don't have polishes, please feel free to keep practicing with your oxides or just watch, because I don't think this will take super, super long. I'm just gonna show you the technique. I may not build it into an actual card. All right, so I have my black piece here. I have lilac. And the other thing that I have done that you guys would not have seen is I did um, wet and dampen uh, the sponges before I came up. You just kind of want to prime them. You don't want them dripping. You want to squeeze out as much water as you can. But the water helps the, the polish to flow nicely. It also makes it easier to clean up, I find, because it's not, it, it, you have a longer time to play with it. So that's my lilac. I have copper pearl here. I have red pearl. And then I think the other color I told you guys, if you had it, was the blue pearl. I also grabbed the green one because I felt like there was a lot of blue and purple and we needed that hit of green. So just like we did with the oxide. Now, this time I'm not building a background. I'm not building a, a base for it to work on. This polish will do really well by itself. But I'm just going to take a little bit of that purple polish. And again, just using the side of the sponge, and I'm running out of room here, so let me move so that you guys can see what I'm up to. Polish, oh, make sure this, remember the lids are off. All right, so again, I'm just gonna try and use my side and do some streaks down, Down our background and you can see how vibrant those colors are so my purple goes in there I'm gonna jump right to the green one next because I know I want some green in here and again the whole idea and the way the way they demonstrated it to us is that you want to think of it as being going up the ski slope so you're making a ski slope out of your polish but then you're also scraping it off so you're not using very much at all if you have too much, it'll get globby on your paper. So again, just using the side. And there we go. So there's my green. And same with the oxide ink. You can go back and forth. Which one was this? This is the copper. I'm going to do copper next. Building in those colors. And now I feel like I just need a little bit of hit of that blue. I may not use the red on this one. I may go right to the blue, which was this one. And I do try to make sure that I keep the right lids with the right pots and the right sponge with the right lids. All right. I'm just so this gives you a completely different look using that same technique. But there you go. 
So you can see how that now has more of that shimmer. It's a little bit, um, I'm gonna say less soft. I didn't wanna say harsh, cause that's not the right word, but it just gives you a slightly different look. So then once again, you could trim it down. You can start building your trees on there. And the really nice thing about these two different techniques is you could probably, you could use them together. So you could do your basic background with your oxides. Um, and then if you only have one color of the opal polish, use that instead of your shimmer brush to add that little bit of shimmer and shine. So I encourage you to play and to try some different color combinations and some different techniques. If you have other products as well that shimmer, um, it just gives that really magical look to it all. So there you have it, ladies. I am gonna turn off the recording and then if you have any questions, we can continue from there.